everyone. Welcome back. It is Friday. That means it's Tin Chat in time. We're here in the dugout at Parkview Field. I'm Maggie Castraba. Joined alongside me is none other than Mike Moss. Mike, how are you doing? It's I'm a long day. I'm doing well, Maggie. Uh, it, to be honest with our viewers, it is Friday. It's after midnight on Thursday. Yes. Tin Caps had a long Thursday playing a pair of uh, games against the Dayton Dragons. We can talk about that in a minute. Yes. A long day, a tough day for the home team, but anytime you're here at what I call the Taj Mahal of minor league baseball, it's kind of magical. You can't go wrong, and and uh, I hope our listeners will get a chance uh, at some point to get out here. It is a beautiful facility, and I know you're new to town, Maggie, but building this ballpark really has been a catalyst for the rebirth of downtown Fort Wayne. Absolutely. I am hopeful that sooner rather than later, at some point in time, we will have our first ever crowd of 10,000 fans in this ballpark. I can see it. The record, and it's been on the 4th of July, which is coming up next week, Yes. Uh, is a little over 9,500 okay. uh, a few years ago. But eight of our large, nine largest crowds have taken place here on the 4th of July. Yeah. So it's a beautiful facility. We've drawn rave reviews. The players during their trek up the line, uh, hoping to get to play at Petco Park someday, mm -hmm. they to a, almost to a person, they love playing here. You and I both know only the diehard fans come out here to see what's on the field itself. Oh, yeah. A lot of families come out here, A, to spend time together as a family. Absolutely. Brings everyone together. This year, there's 28 fireworks scheduled, including one that was tonight. Yeah. Um, shortly, uh, there's going to be some national entertainment acts coming to town. In August, yes. So I'm new to Tin Chatton. I have always looked at these episodes, really wanting to be a part of it. I'm part of it with you here tonight. Been um, going on since 2012. And so a little background about you and I. We kind of have like a few things in common. First off, it's like it should be like the... Maggie and Mike show, the M&M. Be my guest. Exactly. We'll, we'll switch it up. Um, <laughs> but also another M word, we're from Michigan. Yes. You're from the Detroit area. Yeah. I'm from a small town in the Thumb. And our love of sports started there. Yeah. So did yours, we were talking beforehand, did that start with Tigers baseball? Yeah. My family went to the last game, September 27, 1999, the last game inside Tiger Stadium. We were there the day before. And I, I was one, little did my parents know that I would be such the big sports fan that I am, but they left me out to my grandparents. And on any other given day, I would have loved to be at my grandparents. But looking back now, I'm like, wow, you should have took me over my brother. And yeah, so I'm very envious. I never got to experience that. But um, your love of Tiger baseball, my love of Michigan Wolverine football. Oh, and boy. Me too. Okay, go blue. Yeah, I'm excited. But yeah, that's what really got probably got us here and so you um, started here officially in 2003 you've seen a lot of teams come through here and we're about a week into the um, first half of the season being over what in one word could you describe this team right now in one word yeah oh wow uh, it's gonna be hard for one word um, They've been consistently inconsistent. I'm going to use two words. Okay. This has been a rough year for the team. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, the team had a record of 50 and 80, the fewest wins in the history of the franchise, which dates back to 1993. Uh, they've been a Padres affiliate since 1999. Uh, and. We've won only one league championship that came in the uh, very first year of Parkview Field in 2009. But it was a tough year in 2022. Last year, the team was at one point 10 and 22 in the first half. Yeah. Came back and won the they second did. half. Had an overall record of 69 and 63. Made the postseason for the first time since 2017. Lost a heartbreaking best of three series to Great Lakes for the Eastern Division title. Won game one here at home. Lost two one-run games up in, in Midland. So hopes were good that perhaps the team could come back yeah. and uh, do well this year. And you stop and think, 
On the opening day roster this year, there were 23 of the 30 players on the roster that had played here at one point or another during the course of last season. So one would think that the experience factor would come and help. Yeah. It just hasn't totally Not clicked. gelling. The, um, after three weeks, two and a half weeks into the season, the Tin Caps have come off winning the final four games of a series in Dayton, ironically, who they're playing this week. And the team was in first place with a record of eight and six. We come home and we lose eight in a row and 15 out of 19. Yeah. And in all honesty, the team has never been able to recover from that. Uh, now, Glimmer of good moments, there, but overall. There have been some good moments. Yes. Uh, but overall, uh, the team finished 28 and 38 in the first half. Yeah. Two of the last three games of the first half, uh, I should take it back. We won the last game of the first half against first half West champion Wisconsin. And then we took two of the first three games in the second half. But uh, we've hit the skids since then because we lost in game one of the series with Dayton on yeah. Tuesday night. We were rained out Wednesday. We played two games, tonight being Thursday. First game was a long one, too. Uh, three hours and I think 13 minutes <laughs> yeah. or three hours and 18 oh, minutes. You. We lost 10 to 7. Yeah. We had a 2-1 lead going into the sixth inning in a seven-inning game. Yes. They tied it at two. They went ahead three to two. We tied it at three three. They uh, scored three runs in the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. Somehow we come back and scored three runs in the bottom of the yeah, eighth. Yeah, that's when I showed up. They put four runs up on the board in the top of the uh, ninth. We scored one run and had the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth before things, you know, finally ended. Yeah. We got the lead early in game two. Yeah. But we only collected two hits and they scored three runs in a bizarre inning where we committed three errors and the team loses three to one. So they've lost three in a row. They're two and four now in the second half. What do you see, what's a good positive takeaway of this team though? What do they do well? What's getting better, Maggie, is the starting pitching is getting better. Uh, in the first game of the doubleheader on Thursday, Jagger Haynes went over six innings. Mm -hmm. And he has improved by leaps and bounds. The carrots are out there. Yeah. All these players, they want to make it in the major leagues. They have the ability to do it. They have to acquire the know-how and the patience and the drive and the determination. If they can do that and work their tails off, the sky's the limit. Exactly. All right, something fun to break up this uh, time <laughs> that we have together. Um, just imagine we're a player, so this is a very lighthearted question. What is your walk-up song? Because I gotta say, I judge everyone's. I gotta rate them. Oh, wow. I mean, that's an aspect of the game. Me? So if you're a player, Mike Moss, yeah. up to the plate now. You know, what are they playing? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. You know, my baseball career ended in 1968 when I broke my nose for the fifth time. Okay. Taking a fastball in the face and I became oh, gun shy. But if I were healthy, and I had the talent to play at this level or higher. Yeah. And I would come to the plate, especially if the bases were loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning. Absolutely. Uh, the song Don't Stop Believing" by Journey comes to mind okay. in a hurry. It's a classic. And uh, I would probably have that song played. I like that. Because it can get me focused. It can get my teammates focused. And if you're especially here at Parkview Field, you can get the fans focused and you get You're this dialed in and you get it and you get the fans you know the music can play and stop but the fans can do an acapella yeah don't stop believing and then hear that echo boom through the yeah something like joshua mears had a week ago the two out two run game winning home run yes and there's not a better feeling in the world to get the game winning hit we talked with joshua the next night and he's a very kind and polite person, soft-spoken, but he even had a smile on his face. His teammates come out in mass. That's what it's about, Maggie. You, you work it. together as a team. For those moments. For those moments, and you cherish them forever. Well, thank you, Mike, again. Another edition of Tin Chatten is in the books. We're here in the dugout.
Way past our bedtime. I'm tired. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about sleep, especially since I have an 8.36 tea time tomorrow morning. Oh, my gosh. Look at you. So I'm hoping <laughs> to play some golf before I come back to work here for tomorrow night's game. There you go. We'll both be back here tomorrow. That does it for another edition of Tin Chat. And I'm Maggie. That is Mike.